my last video was about trying to uh, get some air leaks sorted on the intake side of things. Now, if uh, for anyone who's watched these videos further back will know that because I couldn't get this U-bend off, I went and raided my part stock and I had this exhaust manifold. And I used this one with the underslung exhaust. So, my issue, one of the issues I have on the other manifold, and on this as well, I'd say, is this flange here isn't flat. And the carb then is buckling a bit and it's, there's a gap in the middle. So what I'm going to try and do is two things. I'm going, to try, I'm going to get these two studs out by hell or high water. I'm going to try and get these out as well. If I have to cut them and drill them, I prefer not to, but I'd like to get them out. I might try and use a bit of heat. And the plan is, while I have this off, I'm going to get this flange nice and flat. And I'm going to get this flange nice and flat. And then I'm going to swap this. This is the original manifold and tractor back onto the engine. I also have done a bit of work on this surface here but I'm going to bring this to a machine shop locally who has a surface grinder and I'm going to get him to take a skim off that because they are a little bit you know middling in some places there and uh, I prefer just to get that done and if I have to then I'll spend as much time as I can to get these nice and flat this is just going to be a nice little project on the side so the first job to do is get this gasket off because I'm going to bring this into the gas cooker inside there to the hob. I don't have any bottled gas, oxyacetylene or anything like that. So I'm going to take off this little gasket. And I think this is one I made for myself. And uh, I'll bring it inside. I'm going to heat it up and I'm going to put on two nuts uh, and I'm going to try and get these out with a bit of heat. So that is the one on the right coming out after I'm after uh, putting on the gas cooker inside and heating up. So I'm going to quickly tighten up the nut on this side. And hopefully this side will come out as well. And then the both are coming out. And then it'll be interesting to see how straight this flange is. Now, I didn't record the first one coming out, so no my luck, this one won't come out. Oh, there we go. So that's them two coming out. Lovely and easy in the end. Very impressed with that. Excellent. Cannot beat original parts, and they're in good condition. Now, that said, it's going to be a lot easier to take them out than it's going to be to take these out. Now, I could always keep soaking it in uh, penetrating oil and hope, but it's fairly well, uh, it's fairly well fried now, of course, vaporizing kerosene and all of that. Now, I'm just going to try and shove. Well, I mightn't be able to get that into it's too big. I'll try and shove some paper down in there and then we'll just give it a quick test for flatness. This is just going to be another little project on the side. This is the original manifold. I want to put it back on. I have a little workshop hoover there to hoover that out. I can blow it out from the other side with the air gun. So, what's the best thing to do? Maybe quick rub of the wet stone and see what is shining up okay this is actually not bad at all surprisingly good so even with those few rubs Can you see? Not too bad at all. But still, I do want to get this back on the tractor. It is the, it is the original one, and uh, I know it doesn't make a whole lot of difference to anyone bar myself. No, no one else would know the one that is on it isn't the, the original one. It's 
So this is going to be very easy to flatten. A few rubs already has nearly sorted it. Yeah, so that's not going to be hard to do. But I know for a fact the manifold that's on the tractor is a bit dicey as to say on each end so at least if I get this surface ground take my time to really rule this out as a, out the equation as being a possible a possible problem um, and not at the same time not be left with a tractor without a manifold on it that can be moved and started and all of that I will and I want to invest the time into getting this A1 getting it right um, so these boys here I'm going to have to just take a quick look at them and see I do remember having a, a go of trying to remove them and it was it wasn't looking like anything was going to move worst case scenario of course I could always um, literally drill through them and put a nut in the bolt but I'd prefer to try and keep it original but are we am I going to be able to salvage him I really don't know maybe him he's not looking too bad but this side is ropey enough so I might bring it into the cooker now and just give it a quick uh, the gas hob now and give it a quick heat each side there and try them try my luck anyway I'm after heating this side up now I don't have the slightest faith that this is going to have moved up oh, maybe maybe I'm wrong it is moving There's your answer. Didn't think I'd be able to break that with a just a spanner. So what harm? I knew that was going to happen. I'll be able to drill it out anyway. So yeah, I thought I had managed to loosen both of them, but they both sheared off. So a bit of a pity, but I'm going to try and uh, maybe drill these the, the, the butts of the studs out and try and get them re be tapped or maybe even with a stud extractor I managed to actually get them out and keep the, the UNC coarse treads in there intact. So, this definitely has been off in a long time. So I'm going to keep tapping at that and uh, get it off and uh, I'll come back when it's done. So that's it off. Actually a very usable part. Only I don't really want the upright exhaust on it at all. And uh, there is the flange. So that, I'm, I'm wondering now, is that an original gasket or not? Anyway, my next job is to... Uh, I have two options here. I can bring this down to an adequate uh, oxyacetylene, try and get them out. Or I can start trying to... Uh, how will I put this? Drill them out. Maybe cut them flat enough, as fast as I can, drill them, drill them out as much as I can, but in a stud extractor, I don't think that's going to work. Or I could bring it back into the, the gas hob, give this a good heat up, bring it out, give that a good heat up, bring it out. It's, going, it's hard to get in there heated on the gas hob, it's not, it's not very hard to get this side, but if I got this side out, it would encourage me then at least to maybe go to, for oxyacetylene to get that side out. So, look, I'm going to take my time with this part, because I don't want to go doing any more damage. If I can get these out, I'll have tread there, original tread. If not, I can drill them out and re-tap with UNF, uh, because I have it, uh, taps for that. So I do want to try and keep it as original as possible. So by re-treading those holes, I think that would be the best. And then using one, uh, using a bo uh, two bolt, original bolts I have in my collection. I think that's the best way of going, keeping this as original as possible. So look, we'll see how I get on. I'm going to try firstly heating up here and try and get this out. So unfortunately, I put this in the glass hob, I put on my vice grips, I filed two, a flat edge each side to get a good uh, grip on it, and it, it um, rung again. So I'm, I'm drilling them out, at least the only way, and then I, at least then I can try and um, retap, Or at the very least, I'll be able to put another bolt through them, at least that way I can salvage this part. So all of a sudden now we have these two studs out intact, in one piece, delighted about that. These are going nowhere, so they're just too far gone. This is the hot side of the exhaust, that's the cool side, so 
it's not surprising. I had to take off the original gas. I say it was definitely original. It was fairly well bet on it. Um, pity because it was in great nick, metal, kind of that sort of a style, both sides and a bit of uh, papery stuff in the middle. So next one is this side. So rather than going ringing that because I know it's just going to ring off, I'm just going to cut it off flat with a hacksaw, file it flat, dot center dot it, uh, center punch it, and then give it the same treatment, drill it out. So I drill this just a little bit too small of a hole, so I'm going to slowly chew at it to try and get it a little um, a little more kind of how we say centralized I might even do, use a round file if I have to and I might try a little stud extractor in it just to see if I could get it out because I haven't actually damaged any of the threads of it. So I've well, drilled it through and now I'm going to have a go at threading it. I'm also going to make sure everything's nice and level. It's going in nice and true. This is just the first, this is just the first little, uh, I'm hoping this may as well catch the, the files. So that's going in nice. This is just to clean, clean things out. It's cutting away lovely there now. This is a UNF fine thread, so I look, originally I think it was coarse thread, but I drilled it. Just left the slightest bit of the stud in it. I was trying to peel it off with a uh, with um, what should I call it? With a one of these with a sharpened end on it. Just getting it started, and I, you know what? It just wasn't going to cut it. Now it was going to end up doing more damage. So I said I'd leave it in there and I cut it out with this. So this is the first. Stage. So we'll use this one to get things started, and then this is a five sixteenths UNF. So I drilled a seven mil hole in there, and then because I don't have any imperial drill bits, and the equivalent to seven mil in imperial is five sixteenths. Oh yeah, looking in there now, that looks. That looks tasty. So this is the final one. Just it's not tapered like the first one. This is the real Mackay, this one. So this goes in and comes out. The job should be oxen. Now I don't know am I gonna have holes to suit this but look it should have. No. So oh, we'll give it a, a look in, in there now. Now we'll get you to focus first. Yeah, so that looks good. For the fun of it, I'm just going to try and get a bolt now that will, uh, doesn't matter the length of it, just to see how, how it goes in there. Scrap that. I measured the holes in there and they're actually the next size up. So I'm after drilling a nine mil hole now, it's about a seven, and I'm putting in the next, the next uh, side up, just to have it right. And I look through my selection of nuts and bolts, uh, bolts especially, and I have some there that will fit this. So that's cutting lovely. So this should be back to uh, the original bore now. Uh, I may as well use the biggest ones I can and the best ones to use are the same size as the factory size. So this is the first stage of cutting. And then I'll put in the final cut. So that yeah, I think this is going to be a lot better. A lot better. And then my camera space storage is, I see is flashing there so if I get a chance I'll show you the bolts that I have picked out for it. This is a 3 8 thread so I drilled a 9 mil hole so that just left enough meat on the bone then for this to cut through and thread it. This 
This is lovely work. I've said it many times before. It's lovely putting fresh new threads into these lovely old parts. Quality material. So, take that out. I'll get my bolt to see how it matches up. I think that's the same thread. Yeah. Okay, so that's roughly what we're talking. That's too long, gone out of focus. That's too long, of course, but um, just to get the, the threads right. So I'm happy with that. I'll pick out two shorter ones and we should be good to go. The battery died there, so update is I got this side drilled and tapped and I got these two studs tightened right in right down and I'm after getting them now to the point where I can remove these. So I, I put on another nut on top and tighten that up against that and then I could thread them in. So I'm happy with them. So I've been working a little bit on flattening this flange. Usually what happens is because just it's pulling down from there and there you'll get a bit of a, a bow and that's what's happened there. You can see here cleaner metal there and there. So this is going for a surface grind in the local machine shop. When I'm there, I'm going to see if you can give this a surface grind as well. If not, I'll keep filing away at it, but it's really, really slow work. Like it just isn't really getting a bite on it. The metal really is very, very hard. But look, I may as well try and get it as good as possible. Um, but I will try and get it surface grinded if you can. This is easy so to do myself, so I'm happy uh, to give that a a bit more attention than needs it. So this is what I'm going to be focusing on, on that. So I'm going to run into them tomorrow. So we'll see what they say. Actually I had to take out those studs again because I forgot I didn't actually finish this flange fully there. So that is how we're looking there now. It seems to be fairly, it's very flat. And what I was using was, just to finish it was whetstone because this is actually wider than the flange. So uh, I could uh, take my time running across and then I found if I used this after using the file, the file would leave rough lines and then when I started using this I could see them lines slowly disappear and I kept going then until I got a nice um, nice even even sort of a finish on the flange so that is how it's looking so this will get a good running through the parts washer It'll get a blowout, all of that, with the air gun, and uh, as I said, hopefully I'll get to be able to get that surface finished there, surface ground on it, because uh, I do find that they just are a bit dirty looking there, a bit pitted and stuff, both ends for whatever reason. Um, whereas I find these are okay. I did spend a lot of time trying to get this flat, so it's just so much metal to try and take off in uh, by hand so you can't really use that and else only sandpaper so that's grand i'm going to try and get this surface ground as well because it's just whatever about the metal there seems to be kind of softer maybe the heat has uh, tempered this a bit it's really really hard work trying to file that you can't really see anything um getting done at all just a bit of there a bit each side so i Obviously, I'm right-handed, so I don't want to go putting more pressure, you know, on this side and getting more sanded off and ended up having it sloped. So I think I'll try and get that done as well. So that's the update so far. So I'll come back um, when I have more to, to show. So since I'm going to be working on this exhaust manifold, and uh, I did try some putting down sheets of sandpaper, two, one after another, and still you can see the outside here is just a little bit. It's not getting to it at all. So this is all a bit higher. So, to make this fully usable, I think it's best to get that done. So this is my spares carb. Because I worked out that there is a crack in this pipe, this new pipe that's only on there a couple of months. What I did was I had looked through my um, kind of rubber hose pipe box, and I also wanted to use these original style jubilee clips, hose clamps. So um, this is a nice pipe 
uh, here, a hose pipe here that I'd like to use. Fits very well onto this end. Now the issue is, if I'm not mistaken, it's narrower down here than it is on this pipe. So the, the carb is a narrow inlet. So it's interesting to see does this fit on that intake pipe when I take it off. I will have to cut this pipe. That's going to be no problem. Um, pity because this is a, I think it's a, what is it off? Ferguson 20 diesel, top of the radiator to the thermostat housing pipe. So it has a part number on it there. So it's a pity that I have to cut it. But any of the other options I have, like this, they're just a little bit tatty. I don't really want to have anything too bright and shiny on the tractor, as I said before. Um, you know, but look, I prefer for things to function. That other pipe that's on the tra uh, tractor at the moment uh, is cracked. So I could try this as well. This is lovely. Um, it, it's kind of elastic cated, like it's very soft rubber, but it's, it's very good quality rubber. And that definitely would stretch up to the bigger pipe. So I can use that. I can use that also if I want. Um, it involves cutting and straightening it up a bit. And I don't know about this. It looks a bit narrow in there, so what I need is something that's going to be able to stretch out a bit, and that is just probably pushing it unless I was to put it in hot water or something and stretch. Um, yeah, so I'll definitely be able to make something out of these. This is the the best quality pipe. It's new. It's unused, so I just have to cut it. So we'll see. I'm not going to go taking that off the engine of the tractor until uh, I have this fully ready to fit and I'm fully happy that this is going to be, that it will be fully overhauled. So all flange is nice and flat and uh, that I can basically say air leaks are just not going to happen. I'll try and see what condition the, the gaskets are on, the gaskets are in on the engine. Uh, I did put a new set of them on when I was doing the head gasket on it. So if they're salvageable, I'll use them again. I have some other spares there, they're not new, but if I need to put new ones on, I will. They're only a couple of euro, and at the end of the day, I'll be able to say that this side of things is completely sealed up, and then I can go focusing on to other areas that where air could be getting in, like the crack that's on the pipe, that's on the tractor around there. Simple things like that, vibration of the engine, opening and closing the crack, more air going in, not an issue when it's running on the revs, it's more, it's more so an issue when it's sticking over. So these are the little, we'll say, attention to detail, I suppose, is what's, it's what's happening here. I'm trying to sort out the, any possible places where air could be getting in. Now, I did do a job on the carpets on the tractor, on the throttle shaft here. I fitted a new throttle shaft, a rebuild kit, and I put a doughty washer in behind this here. And what I was hoping that was going to do with loads of grease was if there was a, if it was drawing air, it would you know doughty would be better suited to uh, seal it because there never was any form of a sealing washer. You could put a fibre washer on or anything like that, but I like the doughties because they have that rubber lip both sides. Between that and the grease that I keep applying to it, I don't really know is it is it actually leaking there. I think from spraying the easy start that we kind of we could see that there was definitely a leak at the back here, so. Um, that's lovely and flat so that's it's not going to be leaking there so what I'll do with the carb when I take it off the tractor is put down a sheet of sandpaper it's the usual story over and back until I get it nice and flat make a new gasket put it on and then on our intake side there should only be the air that's you know it should be the right amount of air going through and it's not, it shouldn't be getting it shouldn't be getting um, extra amounts of air it's a different main jet than mine actually. It's the same size but it's just a different style. It's interesting, this must be in a, it's a Ferguson 20 carb. Anyway, so that is the plan of action. So um, I'll update when I have more to show.